In this lesson you will be given two tasks and then we will code their solutions. I will suggest that you understand the problem statement, then pause the video, do your solution of the task and then watch the solution given in this video. Let's start with the first task. This task is related to creating a class for point on xy plane. A point on xy plane has two coordinates, x coordinate and y coordinate. Firstly, you will create a class point and its object should have two data attributes x and y and their default value should be zero. So that if a point is created without providing any input arguments, both of its coordinates will be zero. Then define an instance method reset which will move the point to origin by making both of its coordinates zero. Then define another method with the name move that will move the point at any location on xy plane by passing in the location as input argument. Then you will need to update the reset method you created in second step in a way that it uses move method to reset a point. Then you need to create two more instance method named as xmove and ymove to move the point horizontally or vertically by passing in the displacement amount in the input argument. Then you need to create another data attribute for the magnitude of a point which is basically the distance of the point from origin. Finally you need to create another instance method named as show point that will return a string in proper format as x, y inside parentheses. We can apply this method on any point object and can print the returning string for proper representation of the point object. Now please pause the video and solve this task before watching the solution. Now we'll write the code for the task. Firstly, we can create the point class and define init method inside it. The init method will take two input arguments other than self and those are x and y assigned to zero as default value. Now let's create two point objects, one without providing input arguments and other with input arguments provided. If we print x and y component of both points, you will see that they are 0 for the first point and 3 and minus 4 for the other. Now let's add reset method. This will not take any input argument except the self and we will set x and y component of self to 0. Let's test this method on point 2 with non-zero x and y. If we run the code, you will see that the x and y coordinates of point 2 are printed as 0. Now let's add method move which will take new location of the point as two input arguments say new x and new y. We will set the x and y attributes of self to provided input arguments. If we test this method on point 2 and provide 5 and 5 as input argument, you will see in the output that new x and y attributes of point are 5 and 5. Once we have move method, we can use it inside reset method to make x and y component of point 0. Similarly, we will add two more methods, move x that will change the x component and move y that will change the y component. We can test move x on point 1 which is at 0 0 and provide minus 10 as input argument. You can see from the output the new coordinates of p1 are minus 10 and 0. Finally for the mag attribute of the point object, it will be generated from x y attributes as square root of x square plus y square. But the important thing is that 
since the point object can move to other locations which will change its x and y attributes so we must define this mag attribute as a method with property decorator so that it picks the updated values of x and y Let's apply this method on point 1 before the movex method and after that. And you will see that it gives correct magnitudes 0 when it was at origin and 10 when it moved minus 10 units on the x axis. Finally, let's add show point method which will return a string in a proper format to represent a point. and test it on one point and you will see a proper display of the point. Now let's move to the second task which is basically the continuation of task 1. In this task you don't need to add anything in the class but it's related to use of class in main program. So firstly in main program create a list of 5 point objects with random values of x and y components. The random values should be integers from minus 10 to 10. Now create another list again of 5 random points but this time the random values of x and y should be between minus 5 and 5. Then create a function inside the main program named as add points that will take two points as input argument and will return a point object that will be the sum of the two input arguments. Then create a list of points which are some of the corresponding points inside the two lists created earlier. Of course using the add points function. Finally sort the third list of points based on the magnitude of the points and print the list. Assuming that you have done your solution, let's see my version of the solution. To create random numbers, I will import randint from random module. To create a list of 5 points, we should use list comprehension. But for those of you who are not familiar with list comprehension, I'll first paste a code snippet without list comprehension. Here we start with the empty list, iterate 5 times, create a point object with random values of x and y between minus 10 and 10, and then append that point to the list. On the other hand, it can be done using list comprehension in a single line, where we first specify the point object we want to create, followed by the for loop to iterate 5 times. Now we can print each item of this list which is a point using show point method in a for loop. If we run the code, you will see that this contains 5 points with random values of x and y between minus 10 and 10. In a similar way we can create the second list and see the output one more time. The next part was to create add points function inside main program. We will define this function and specify two input arguments.
this function will return a new point object created with x attribute as the sum of x attributes of input arguments and y attribute as the sum of y attributes of input argument. Now let's quickly test this function by creating two points and then applying this function on those points and displaying the result using show point method on the result. You will see that it added the points correctly with the result 3, 4. Now let's go ahead and use this method on the two lists we created earlier to add the corresponding points inside the list. To do that, I'll use the map function and pass in add points method followed by first and second list. The result will be a map object, so I must convert it to a list. Now let's print the third list also. You will see at the output, the first point in first list is minus 5 minus 2 and the first point in second list is minus 1 minus 2 are added correctly to minus 6 minus 4 which is the first point of the third list. And you can verify the remaining 4 points of 3 list. The last part of the task was to sort the third list based on the magnitude of the points. For that, I'll use sort method on the third list. But if I'll run it like that, it will generate an error because the sort method doesn't know on which basis it will consider one point object less than the other point object. So I'll have to specify the sorting rule by passing in the key argument. In key argument, we have to specify a function based on which the item will be sorted. So I'll specify that by a lambda expression with point p as input and mag attribute of point p as return value. Now if we print the list before and after applying the sort method, you will see the list is correctly sorted based on the magnitude of the points. After sorting, the first point is 26 which is having the minimum magnitude among the 5 points in the list and so are the other points in ascending order. That's all from this lesson. Thank you very much.